open our hearts and our minds to your scriptures and then produce a to harvest our lives. Anoint your speaker. Let your word go for power and fire. Amen. That all glory and honor might return to you. Amen. In the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. And today we are reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 20, the first 10 verses. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 10. And in this passage, we see what will happen at the end times, and we see how powerless Satan is against the power of God. Now, this book was written by Apostle John after they had thrown him in a pot of oil to fry him, and to their surprise, he did not die. So they said, Well, if you cannot kill him, then you can banish him. And they put him on this pile of Alain of animals. Speak is still there today. And they said, that's it, let him just die. Maybe the animals will kill him. So it was on that island that Jesus came down and gave him this revelation. If you read the first couple of chapters, you see how he met the Lord Jesus Christ and how he appeared to him. I will explain to him how he appeared as seven candlestick holder. Why we use the seven kinds to call that in this church on Sundays. And so we must show what will happen in the future so that you and I will not be taken by surprise. So it's very important to please learn these things because we are prepared. It will prepare you for the future. It's very useful to have a poor knowledge that we are not caught by surprise. And it says he saw an angel, this was a mission, come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. A great chain in his hand. And what did he do with that chain and the key? He laid hold on the dragon, that is that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So I want you to look at this picture of one angel in heaven grabbing hold of Satan. This Satan that people are talking about, that everybody is scared of. One angel wrapped him and put him in the pit for a thousand years. If only one angel can do that, how about all the numerous, numerous angels that God has? The reason why I'm emphasizing is to show you that Satan, with all this bravado, a lot of noise, is really a small thing in God's sight. You know, many people are more afraid of Satan than of God. They are more afraid of the witches and wizards than of God. They are more afraid of the cultists than of God. In reality, none of them can even come close to God's presence. You see? They say empty barrels make the most noise. Satan is very loud. He knows how to brag and to portray himself as powerful when actually his power has been removed by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Satan has been defunct, meaning that his power is still has been removed. He's a toothless bulldog. Now, you can only say that when you know who you are in Christ. You know the God you serve. And you know the power that he has. But most people don't know that. They don't know you are God. They haven't read about him. And so they are taken aback by the brother door of Satan. They're so scared. Oh, Satan will do this, Satan will do that. Satan can only do what God allows him to do. That's it. See, one angel, only one angel, grabbed him and put him into the pit for 1,000 years. So where is he? Where is his power? Hmm? Where is this power of this Satan that is causing all these terrible calamities and wars and bloodshed? Where is his power? So you don't have to be fearful of Satan. But for you to do that, you must be in God. You must know your rights, child of God. See? That he who is in God is more than all the powers of the enemy. But because it's so loud, 
he creates the impression that she's more powerful than he is. He's really nothing to be for her. He can't even compare. After all, after all, Satan is just a creation of God, and he was an angel being in, in heaven before he decided to rebel against God. He was one of the angels. He killed and uh, he rebelled. And that's how he, you know, but they didn't, God didn't change his power when he expelled him from heaven. Why? Because he wanted to test his children to see whether they would follow him or follow Satan the deceiver. They bound him a thousand years. Now, during that thousand years, it's called the millennial reign of Christ. They have a complete peace on the earth during that time. Why? Because Satan, the adversary, the deceiver, has been locked up and he cannot deceive anybody anymore. Meaning that Satan is responsible for 99% of all the problems you and I are going through in this world. And once it's bound, then this world will be peaceful. See? And you cast into whatever this spirit that shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. See? Deceive the nations no more. The greatest weapon of Satan is deception. That's what he used to deceive Eve, the Garden of Eden. That's what he used to deceive Achan when they entered Jericho. That's what he used to deceive King David when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and so many other people. He gives a false image of something. You thinking that thing is good when it's actually terrible for you. For instance, he will tell you, oh, it's okay, nobody can see what you're doing. You know, you can just take that money from the office. Let's take that thing. Well, you two, if you believe that, then you take it. And then, once you are caught, you send to court, you send to jail, and you won't see Satan anymore at that time. See? That is his greatest weapon, is to deceive. Jesus Christ said he had come to give us life, and life more abundantly, for Satan has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Daniel 6 17. Revelation 12 verse 9, Daniel 6 17, Revelation 12 verse 9. So I want you to see the pattern how God. Yes. And a great dragon was cast out, mm-hmm. the whole serpent, yes. called the devil, mm-hmm. and Satan, mm-hmm. which deceived the whole world. Yes. He was cast out into the earth, mm-hmm. and his angels were cast out with him. That's his. His angel will cast out. Daniel 6 17. Daniel 6 17. Yeah. Then a stone was brought mm-hmm. and laid on the mouth of the den. Mm-hmm. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring mm-hmm. and with the signet of his Lord. Yes. And the purpose concerning Daniel must not be changed. That's it. So, so the thousand years shall be fulfilled. After that, it will be used a little season. Really, at the end of the day, God is using Satan to test his children. That's the completion of it. Because he has no power, he cannot face God. But God allows him to roam around to test his children who would rather obey him than obey God. So it's like a test, a test. And God is actually using him to do his work. Now, he says, and he saw thrones that they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. So after that time, there will come judgment. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, and had received his mark upon their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. What's the to? There's going to come a time, the end times, which is fast approaching, when the Antichrist, the agent of Satan, will rule this world. And they will decree that anybody, nobody will be able to buy or sell without that mark 666 on their forehead or their arm. So if you are unfortunate to be alive at that period and you're a Christian, well, it will be very, very difficult for you because there will be no way where you can buy or sell unless you receive the mark. And you will know in your heart that once you receive that mark, there's no more redemption for you. You can never, ever, ever get to heaven once you receive the mark. So many at that time would rather be killed. Their heads would be cut off. That's the only way that they were able to see Christ. 
because if they refuse if they if they take the evil mark uh, that mark of the beast is eternal damnation so that's why it says that this is so the souls of them that were beheaded many many people will be headed at that period because they will rather die than take evil mark see those are the post matters so they would rather die they said well i know that if i take this mark i know i can't buy i can't eat without this uh, this evil mark so well it's just one blow i won't kill it anyway i'll be dead so so many many people will be here at that time the end times rather than receive that mark for the true christians and at that time many christians will be killed not only by refusing to take the mark even their own family will betray them and say oh we know this christian doesn't believe in you they want to take the mark and when people have been arrested the night and have been taken to the guillotine and cut off their heads but i can tell you it would be better for you to have the head cut off rather than to take that evil mark of course most christians would take the mark and say oh after all jesus will understand how can i live i can't buy i can't sell my god will start for them oh, and they will justify it say okay no you will understand but once you take that mark Says. Because that mark is the mark of the beast, mark of Satan. So once you take the mark of the as Christ, the beast, then you belong to him. You cannot claim to belong to Jesus anymore. Daniel 7 verse 9, Matthew 19, 28, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3. Daniel 7 9, I watched the thrones were put in place, mm-hmm. and the ancient of days was seated. Mm-hmm. His garment was white as snow, mm-hmm. and the hair of his head was like pure wool. Yes. His throne was a fairy flame, mm-hmm. his will a burning fire. Mm-hmm. See, that was the first resurrection. From Matthew 19 28, 1 Corinthians 6 23. 1 Corinthians 6 23. Yes. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Mm-hmm. If the world be judged by you, yes. are you worthy to judge the smallest matter? Yeah. Verse 3. Do you know, do you not know that we shall judge angels? Yes. How much more things that pertain to this life? That says the judgment. Yeah, it's referring to this judgment. Because this 1000 year reign, the, the Christians, those Christians who are beheaded will be judged. Those are the thrones that you saw. They will be the judges of the people living on the earth at that time. How? Because they've already paid the supreme price with their souls. So the first matter is that this is what's called the first resurrection. So those people that take part in that first resurrection are only the select few who will be beheaded for the sake of Christ. Even now, there are many, many people who are killed for the sake of Christ in many nations around the world. We don't hear much of them, but many people are killed daily for being a Christian, for following Jesus Christ, especially in the Islamic countries, you know, they are killed, they are beheaded, all kinds of things. So, those ones are waiting for this millennial reign, this 1,000 years to come, when they will be come alive and they will reign for Christ. So, but the rest of the dead live not again until 1,000 years were finished. So, apart from this, people who are beheaded, the other people who have died will remain in the grave. These people will rise up and they will live and reign with Christ for us for a thousand years. Now, we know that the scripture confirms that this already happened when Jesus Christ died and rose again. What happened? He says, Many of the dead in Jerusalem rose from the dead and went to see their relatives. It's in the Bible. You can check it. That was the first resurrection. They physically rose up from their graves. Can you imagine seeing your grandpa who <laughs> only saw the pictures? Just showing off your pattern. <laughs> Say, hello, eh? What's this guy? <laughs> it must have caused a lot of confusion, but it happened. So, this post resurrection will only be for the masses, those who paid the supreme price for Christ. Some of you might think that, oh, this is a huge sacrifice. No, it's not. If you really think of it, it's nothing really um, paying the supreme price because Christ Himself paid the price for you and I to be where we are today. So if he asks you to pay with your life, it's just part of part of what you're called to do. 
That's why Christ said, unless you are ready to lay down your life, you cannot be my disciple. See? If you're still holding on to your life and saying, oh, I don't want to die, you cannot be the disciple of Jesus Christ. You want to get to the Savior and say, well, if that's what it takes, fine. Like Apostle Paul said, you'd rather be with Jesus than to continue on this path. But for their sakes, he chose to remain. That's the way you should be. So if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you must have it in your mind that maybe one day you could be called to be the Spirit of Christ. And if that's, that's the way it is, fine, you should accept it already. Because you'll be among these people that will reign for a thousand years. This is what matters. The blessed and holy is he that have part in the false resurrection. You see? Those who are blessed. Why? Because they pay with their lives for the sake of Christ. A special category of people. You know? Blessed and holy is he that have part in that false resurrection. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So it is blessed be among those people because they will be priests of God and they will reign with him for that 1,000 years. Isaiah 61 verse 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Isaiah 61 verse 6. Isaiah 61 verse 6. Yes. But you shall be named, named the priest of the Lord. Yes. They shall call you the servant of God. Uh -huh. of God. Yes. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles mm -hmm. and in their glory you shall boast. First Peter 2 9. First Peter 2 9. 2 9. Yes. But you are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. a holy nation, yes. a peculiar people, a peculiar that people. you should show forth the praises of him mm -hmm. that has called you yes. in darkness uh -huh. into his marvelous light. Yes. What a powerful verse. See how it describes the children of God. So he has called you from darkness. That should be the testimony of every one of us that God has called us out of the world of sin and degradation and the clutches of Satan who are loosed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb to come and serve God. And we're peculiar people and strange people. See, because people cannot understand Christians or how or why they behave some way. Some of you guys know these people are fanatic, these people are crazy. Just because the way they're dancing, they're like, oh, what? I don't understand it. See, this is a peculiar people. They're peculiar to God. Yes, they're proud to be peculiar people. They can show what God is to the world. It's a reign of Christ a thousand years. So when a thousand years have expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why? To go and tempt the nations again for the great battle of Armageddon. Battle. We will go deceive the nations again. And we'll see what happens next. So I shall go out and deceive the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog refers to Russia and Iran. And Magog. To gather them together to battle the number of whom is in the sand of the sea. So these nations, Russia and Iran, they will gather all the enemies of the Jews, all the Arabs. Now we can see it's really happening now with this crisis going on in, in Israel. You know, they will now join together and plan to kill all the Jews. But God will come down and, and, and defend his own. You see, behind every battle, every conflict, is Satan's deception because people are going to believe in errors. For instance, people who, who, who commit suicide, suicide bombers that blow themselves up, they are deceived to think that, oh, when they get to wherever they go until they die, they say they will have 70 virgins at their disposal. All these lies. And they believe it, they're brainwashed. So they're not, they, they, they don't feel that anything wrong is for them to. Come blow themselves up because they say, Oh, after all, I die. I'm going to have this palace with all these virgins attending to me. You see, this is the deception of Satan. He's been deceiving from the world go and he's still deceiving people. You know, it was the false image he gave to Eve that the fruits Eve shouldn't eat. Eve got told her how to eat. 
It is similar that, oh, if she hates you, she'll be like God. You know, she'll know right from wrong. And all these things are unfortunately evil. You know, we need a lie and rebel against God's authority. And you and I were here today because of that. So it says, shall go out of the seed nations, earth of the earth, God and the God. Ezekiel 38 verse 2. Ezekiel 38 verse 2. And Revelation 16, 14. So he will make them think that, ah, this is the right time to kill all these Jews. Revelation 16, 14. Yes. For they are the spirit of devils, mm-hmm. working miracles. Yes. Which go forth unto the king of the earth. Yes. And of the whole world. Mm-hmm. To die them to the battle of the great day of That's God Almighty. That's it. That's the battle of Magellan. Ezekiel 38 to uh, 38. Two. Son of man, yes. set your face against God mm-hmm. of the land of Magon, uh-huh. the prince of Rosh, yes. Meshe, and Tuba, mm-hmm. and prophecy against him. Mm-hmm. So, this is exactly what he was going to do. He was going to enter those people's minds and give them a lie that they will believe. They will believe that now is the opportunity time to destroy the Jews. You know, in 1967, you have happened like that. Seven nations around Israel, they conspired to destroy them. And uh, within seven days, Israel destroyed all of them. It's called the Yom Kippur War. It was 15 years ago that this thing happened again now. The Hamas. So these people, they are. In their hearts, they are born and they are fed the lie that their life's ambition is to destroy anybody that is Jewish. I've talked to some of them before, even those who are not Arabs, you know, and they have this hatred for the Jews. You know, and no matter what the Jews say, they can never be pacified out. So they kill the Jews and they indoctrinate it from the time they're born. So God will defend his people because. Satan will deceive them to go against God and God will come down and destroy them. So they went upon the bread of the earth and compared the calf of the saints about and the beloved city, that's Jerusalem. And fire came down, you see? Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. God will never leave his own. Maybe you are with the Jews wherever you are now. Maybe you are surrounded by enemies. Could be your family. Could be in a place of work, and they're all plotting to destroy you. Why? Because you're different from them. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't fornicate with them. You don't join them in their evil deeds. You know, feel like you're hot. Uh, you don't want this guy here. You know, you never seem like you're upset because it always makes me feel guilty. Maybe you're like that. Never ever you give up. Never ever you be scared or afraid because God is with you. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. You see? God, he might feel alone, but God is always with you. You see? So that's the same thing with the people of Israel. God and God will never leave them. And there's no way any country in the world would ever, ever destroy Israel. It's just impossible. No matter what they try, never ever destroy them. And say the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and rich, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 10, uh, Revelation 19, 20, and Isaiah 8, verse 8. Yes. And the beast was taken, mm-hmm. and with him the false prophet yes. that wrought miracles before mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. with which he deceived them. Yes. That received the mark of the beast, mm-hmm. and them that worship his image. Mm-hmm. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, fire. burning with brimstone. That's it. You can see in that passage, it says that this false, this false prophet was empowered by Satan to perform miracles. And through those miracles, he deceived those people who are ready to take the human life. Why am I saying this? Because there are thousands of people going all over the world looking for miracle ministries. Don't think 
only God's power does miracles. No, Satan does false miracles too. If you are somebody who is going to minister to the church because of miracles, be very careful because Satan too can perform those miracles. And if you are there, you'll be included in any judgment coming upon that place. Don't look for miracles. Look for Jesus. When you find Jesus, then you get the true miracle. Most of these miracles are false miracles. You find many ministries paying people to come and pretend. There was one lady in Lagos who had gone to about four or five ministries until she was caught. So you have a hand somewhere, when they pray for us, you knew how to release it. Trying to tell people that it's a miracle done when it actually hasn't been done. So don't be deceived into going to some place because, oh, they have miracles there. No. Check the source of those miracles first. In the spirit of discernment, God will tell you whether these are genuine miracles or false miracles. In any case, as a child of God, you should not be removed by miracles. Really, miracles are for unbelievers. So bring them to Him. So when you are a child of God, you don't need to be convinced of God's power by miracles. The fact that you are in the church by self is a miracle. You are the miracles by. You know? So that false prophet will do miracles, will command fire to come down from heaven. And everybody will see and say, Oh, this must be the Christ. And will worship. So anybody who refuses to worship the image of that beast, you think of the statue, that person's head will be cut off. So the beasts and the false prophets is automated day and night, forever and ever and ever. This is the journey. Revelation 14, verse 10. This is the of Satan. So some of you are following one. Yeah. 14 verse 10. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the Lord of God, mm-hmm. which is poured out full strength mm-hmm. into the cup of his ignition. Yes. He shall be tormented with fire, mm-hmm. brimstone, yes. in the presence of the holy angels, yes. and in the presence of the Lamb. That's it. He tormented day and night. So Satan now is allowed to roam around because God is using him to straighten and test his children. But it's coming a time when he himself shall be thrown into that lake, that lake of fire, great storm, and he will torment it day and night, forever and ever. His torment will never cease. You know, and perhaps you are watching this program and you have not yet made up your mind to follow Christ. Maybe you have one leg in the church, one leg outside. You still love the world so much, you can't turn your back to the things of this world. Uh, you may be a church goer, you may be a prophet, you may be an evangelist, but you have not yet fully surrendered your life to Christ. Then don't live it any longer. Let your life be the last night because you don't know where you will be tomorrow morning. Suppose something happens to you in the night. And that all those people that were slaughtered in Israel a few days ago. They, they were at the music festival. They never in their wildest imagination believed that that would happen to them. But it happened. It happened. And many of them now have lost in hellfire because they were never prepared to die at that time. May that not be your portion, but I'm trying to tell you that don't leave it any longer. You need to surrender to Christ tonight. You need to confess your sins, ask Him to come into your life, because you're being religious, you're coming to church, does not qualify you for the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have said that to, to Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So don't say, oh, I'm a good person, I go to church, I give money. To the poor people, I do full scholarship, I do all this. Yes, those things are good things. But they don't cancel your sin. What acts can you replace, cannot absorb you from sin? Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away that sin in your life. So, if you decide to surrender your life to Christ tonight, then join me in this prayer. You say, Lord Jesus. I have sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy and forgive me my sins. Wash me away with the precious blood. Then come inside my heart and rule and reign of my life. Take my name to the book of the dead, those going to hell, and 
put my name in the book of life. You're so savvy for the many days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Simple prayer. If you see that prayer from the bottom of the heart, you really meant it from the bottom of the heart, you will see a drastic change come upon your life. Why? Because often all the sins you've committed from the day you were born, till you said that prayer, they will be cancelled. Meaning that you become like a newborn baby. A newborn baby born today has no record of sin. Then after that, you will, you will come into your heart and you find that all the bad, bad things you used to do analyzing, smoking, all these bad things, fornicating. Suddenly you lose the passion of the gospel then, and be replaced with the passion for God, coming to church, reading the Bible, praising God. And people say, ah, isn't that man we used to go out together? What happened to him? He doesn't go out with her anymore? He doesn't smoke anymore? Ah, what happened to him? That's confirmation. Now born again. You are no longer a person, you are a new creature in Christ. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, only my God, the God of all glory, we thank you for the truth that you shared with us tonight. Let this truth set us free. Heavenly Father, deliver us from the deception of Satan. Let us not buy to his lies. Let us not agree. Take the shortcuts. Let us not take the evil mark at any times. Give us the power to lay down our lives before you. And whatever that we take, we'll be prepared to do it for the sake of Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving our souls. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 That's it for tonight. Make sure you read this passage again. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you teach you and bring you into his presence. Amen. 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 He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking